Hi there, I'm Gerard. When we do conditional logic with if statements, we do comparisons between values to find matching criteria, so that the if statement can decide to execute or not. Decisions are therefore made based on Boolean values, or the result of expressions that yield Boolean values. We typically use an equal sign in the if statement to do comparison, and an else statement will often handle the actions that must execute when a match doesn't exist. The equal sign is not the only operator that evaluates conditions to make decisions. Today we will look at other operators that can be used by an if statement to do comparisons. These operators, including the equal sign, are called relational or comparison operators. You already learned that the equal sign evaluates if the operands on both sides are exact matches. Some other relational operators that can also be used to make decisions are greater than, greater than or equal, less than or equal, and not equal. Greater than evaluates if the operand on the left is greater than the one on the right side. If it is a number that is evaluated, it is quite easy. For example, 70 is greater than 60. Everyone knows that. If it is a string or a character that is evaluated with an if statement, it means the value in the left operand must be after the one in the right in the alphabet. Here, the letter L in the word lots is after the F in the word fun, so it is greater than. Therefore, the expression evaluates to true. This is the same as numbers because the ASCII number of the characters in the string will be evaluated. Remember, the ASCII numbers follow each other in an ordinal sequence. If it is dates or time that are compared, the left side must be later in the timeline than the one on the right for the if statement to evaluate to true. Dates has day, month and year numbers, and time has hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds that also follow each other in a sequence. So a later date has numbers that is greater than earlier dates. And the same applies for time values. The opposite of greater than is less than. Greater than and less than do not include the value on the right side of the comparison. In other words, if BTEH is greater than 12, we'll evaluate if the value in BTEH is 13 or higher. So 12 is excluded from the evaluation. The same applies for less than. If BTEH is less than 12, means the if statement will only evaluate to true if the value is 11 or lower. So 12 is also excluded from this evaluation. If you do want to include 12 in these evaluations, you must use greater than or equal or less than and equal. The opposite of equals is not equal. We use less than and greater than operators together if we want to evaluate if the value on the right side is not matching the value on the left side. Let's try relational operators with the project we started last time. Like always, I already created the user interface to save time. This is how the project must look when we are done. The application requires a name and an age. If you leave the name edit blank, the panel at the bottom must display a name is required in red, and the focus must be returned to the edit. We already completed the code for this validation in the previous lesson. If you do enter the name and the age, the program must look at the age and show an age category in this panel in black font. Every age must fall in a category that spans 10 years. So any age in a decade range will show the person's name and age group. My son's name is Philip and he is 25 years old. So this panel just displays the age and this one displays Philip is a Visenarian. That funny word is the age category for people that are 20 to 29 years old. If a person, like Great Granny, is 93 years old, it must display Great Granny is a nonagenarian. This is the age categories. I'm not going to try to pronounce all these funny generian words. But notice that we will call a person younger than 10 a young child. And anyone older than 110 is a supercentenarian. So there is no upper or lower limits. But if you are so blessed and lucky to live longer than 110, you will stay a supercentenarian and sometimes get free movie tickets and senior discounts. If you want to do the project with me, you will find the link in the description below this video that will take you to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. Go download the starter files and come back here and write the code with me. You will also find the link to Embargadero's download page where you can download Delphi 10.3 Community Edition for free. That's what I'm using to record these lessons. So sometimes you do not have to be a centenarian or even a super centenarian to get free stuff. This is the starter project you can download. The user interface is already open in my Delphi IDE. If you are ready, let's first double click the button. Here we already have the code that we wrote last time. 
We declared these variables for the name in the edit and the age in the spin edit. This if statement checks if the value in the name edit is empty. If so, these statements will tell the user that the name is required and then focus will be returned to the edit so that the user can type a name. The exit statement will exit the event handler to prevent any code in this event handler to continue executing. The user will therefore not be able to continue if a name is not given. If a user type a name in the edit, this line changes the panel's font back to black if it was changed to red before. Here we do it under the if statement. Here we read the age from the spin edit, then we convert it to a string with the into string function, and then we assign it to the caption of the panel. This if statement checks for equality. It uses an equal sign to evaluate if the text in the edit matches an empty string. If so, it executes these statements and exits the whole event handler. If not, it ignores this block and the compiler continues with the rest of the code in the event handler. We also used the equal sign to evaluate conditions in the previous lessons. Let's see what happens if we replace the equal sign with not equal. Remove the equal sign and type less than and greater than in its place. Run the program. Click the button without the name in the edit. Delphi's compiler finds nothing wrong with that because the text is an empty string. So the compiler will skip the statements in the if block and continue without showing a message. But it does show the H in the panel. Now type your name and click the button. The code in the if statement executed because the text in the edit is not empty. So not equal to will throw the whole apple cart upside down and do exactly the opposite of equals. Close the form. Remove the less than and greater than operators and replace it with an equal sign. You can also go and play around with greater than, less than, greater or equal, and less or equal, and see how your program apply the logic of different relational operators. But you can do that later. Let's now do the age categories. We have 11 different conditions to handle. Let's first declare a string variable that stores an age category. Put your cursor after str name and type comma str age category. Make a new line here and type if followed by a space over type true with bteh greater than equal to 110. After then type strh category colon equals supercentenarian. And for now terminate the line. Here we evaluate if the value in bteh is greater than equal to 110. We use greater or equal because we also want to evaluate 110. Remember, without the equal sign, it will evaluate 111 and higher. Go to this statement and remove the word name and the plus, then add this part at the back. Now we read the name from the edit that is stored in the string variable named str name. We then concatenate the value with a literal string and we concatenate all that with the string variable that contains the age category. Then we assign all that to the caption of PNL age category. This statement is now separate from the if statement because of the line terminator here on the previous line. So this will happen regardless of the if statement's result. Run the program. Type your name and type 85 in the spin edit and click the button. 85 is lower than 110, so the if statement evaluates to false. We don't have code for ages under 110, so the panel only shows Gerard is A, without the age category. So here you can see that the last code we typed is executed, even if the if statement's condition is not met. Now type 120 in the spin edit, click the button. Now the if statement evaluates to true, and it shows that you are a supercentenarian. Close the form, put your cursor at the back of the if statement and remove the line terminator. Press enter, on the new line type else followed by a space and then if bteh greater or equal to 100 and after then type strh category colon equals centenarian and enter statement. This else if statement will check if the age is above 100 and if it is, the category will be centenarian, which will now be stored in the string variable. Only one of these if statements will evaluate it true. 
If the age is 110 or higher, the first if will execute. And if not, the compiler will evaluate the next if statement. If the value is above 100, the action in the first if statement will be ignored and the second if statement will return true, which will then assign centenarian in the stream variable named strh category. The last statement will still execute regardless which if statement evaluates to true. And if none of them are true, it will still display a message in the panel without the category, like when we used 85 as the age earlier. Run the program, type your name, type 85 again for the age, see we get the same as before because none of the if statements are true, and the last statement executes regardless. Type 110 in the spin edit and click the button. You are a super centenarian, type 100 in the spin edit and click the button. Now you are a centenarian. Close the form. I'm going to run ahead with all the other age categories. You can pause the video if it goes too fast. Remove the line terminator from the back of this line, copy the whole line, paste on a new line, and paste 9 more times on new lines. Replace all these ages by reducing them with 10 years for all the lines. So the ages go down in descending order in decade intervals on every line. Then change all the categories, like I do here. Ok, now there's one condition left. All these age groups are for people 10 years and older, but we don't have a category for young children 9 years and below. We can cover them in a final else statement. Make a new line under the last if statement and type else strh category colon equals young child and terminate this line. Notice that only the last else statement has a line terminator. In other words, all these statements can also be typed on one single line, but that will make it difficult to read. You can also type the actions after then on separate lines. This is how it will look. And in a previous video, I said that I like to use begin and end statements, even if my if statement must just perform one action per condition. But with so many conditions, the code will be too long and difficult to read. And also notice that I start with the highest age category, if I use greater than or equal. If we started with the lowest age category like this, which is 10, then most of the ages will fall in this category, because all ages above 10 will then be handled by the first if statement. Then only people under 10 years old will not evaluate it true. Remember the compiler reads from top to bottom, so the first if statement will be evaluated. And if it is false, the next if statement, and then the next and so on. This statement is still at the bottom, and it executes regardless which condition is met, just like before. Let's run the program. Type your name in the edit and 85 in the spin edit. Click the button. Octuagenarian is the age category. Now make the age 120, and now you are a supercentenarian. Change it to 5, and you are a young child. And now test it with your own age. When you are done, close the form and save the program. We will come back to this project later. I will show you how you can replace all these if statements with another type of conditional statement called a case statement. But that is only later in this series. Next time, we will explore more if statements with logical operators. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with all your friends. Thank you for watching and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Happy coding and I'll see you next time.